first step in our project is to connect the jumper wires for the LED. Black is going to go to ground. Red is going to go to volts in, which for a USB connector is 5 volts. And brown is going to go to pin 7. The actual colors you use don't matter, as long as you get the wires to the correct location. Also note that we have 30 LEDs on this strip, and that's fine to power 30 directly from the breadboard, but if you have a great number of LEDs, you will need a separate power supply. Next, we're going to connect our rotary encoder. The green wire is going to go to ground, and the yellow and orange wires, which are the signal, need to go to pins 2 and 3. It's very important that we use these pins 2 and 3, and not some other pins because the library, the software that helps us read this encoder, uses something called interrupt-driven input. And on the Arduino Uno, you can rely on this on pins 2 and 3. And I can't speak for other pins being able to reliably do interrupt-driven input. Now we're going to connect the push-button portion of the rotary encoder. One of these wires, it doesn't matter which one from the switch, can go to pin 4. And the other goes to ground. And if you'll notice, We've used up all of our three ground connections for an UNO, so it's a good thing we don't have more parts for this project. But if you did need more ground connections, you can always twist a couple wires together because ground is the same no matter which things need to connect. The last step is to connect a USB cable so we can upload a program onto our Arduino. The specific cable you'll need must match the board you have. Be sure to use a high quality cable as cables that are frayed or shorted internally can cause problems uploading a program. 